I call the meeting to order. We begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Um, I am noting that the, um, the agenda indicates that the meeting is supposed to start at 6.30, and we have started at 6.37. Um, however, the uh, public hearing item is noticed for seven. So what I'm proposing that we do is move up all of the items in front of the public hearing, uh, and then if necessary, we can adjourn uh, for a brief period of time and then recall at seven. Um, any objections? None. Okay, uh, with that, uh, roll call. Um, through the chair, I recommend making a formal motion, if you could. Okay, I make a motion um, as chair to reorder the uh, the order of the meeting to go one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, six. Is there a second? I'll second that. Uh, all in favor? Oh, strike that. Can I have a roll call? Commissioner Harper Pedersen? Yes. Commissioner Gutierrez? Yes. And Chair Silverman. Yes. All right. Now can uh, I have a roll call? Another roll call. An, an intense roll call. This is so ridiculous. Are roll but calling for this one? It's just for the roll call roll call. Oh, got it. We didn't even do the roll call oh, roll call. We right. anticipate that all commissioners will be in attendance by the time we hit 7 p.m., if not before. Matter, we only but need I will three. Go ahead. And, all right. And just for the record, because I'm calling doing the roll call now. Um, Commissioner Bergman is not yet in attendance. Uh, Commissioner Gutierrez. Present. Commissioner Harper Pedersen. Present. Vice Chair Don Bradley is not yet in attendance. Chair Silberman. And I'm still present. All right, um, the next item on the agenda is the public comment period. Um, this item is intended for public comment uh, for items that are not on the agenda. Uh, does anyone wish to be heard by the commission for an item that is not on the agenda? Yes, come on up. If you don't mind, come up to the, it's, I know it's ridiculous and it's super formal, but they're recording the, uh, you're on TV. Yeah. Uh, yes, so I would like actually to know more about the public art projects, so the future projects. I'm currently representing an artist who's doing a large scale public art. Uh -huh. So I would like to know more about the public art uh, pros, uh, projects in the city, okay. because I saw that there were a lot of new buildings which have been built, and you have a few projects, so maybe there will be some opportunities for, for this. Okay. Um, does staff want to briefly respond to that public comment? Uh, sure. Um, the city has an adopted public arts master plan. I believe it was adopted in the year 2009 when the general our general plan was updated and adopted as well around the same time. And um, the public arts master plan is overseen by the um, parks department. Um, the city has a parks and recreation commission um, which reviews and approves public art projects. Um, so for example, um, within that plan, it identifies certain areas areas within the city um, where public art is intended and encouraged and through and, and like you mentioned it is accomplished through some new development projects that are within those particular areas so one of the um, projects that will be submitting a public art piece in the near future is the San Carlos Transit Village which is located right next to the Caltrain station um, and there are other projects that um, haven't yet been um, submitted at this time um, but one we know Know of will also be located in an area where public art is anticipated to occur. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about that public art plan and the procedures here at the city, that's something um, that I can definitely share with you. And I don't, I think I have a card with me and I'll leave you my card and you're welcome to email me. That's great. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Very nice to sort of meet you. <laughs> Um, okay, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the July 17th, 2017 meeting. Um, does anyone have any changes to the minutes? Give me one second. I've got one change for sure, and I need some clarification on another. Uh, 
under on the first page it says Commissioner Gutierrez asked if Hyatt has a certain maximum number required for staffing. I, I think I meant I think I said minimum. Because maximum number. I think it was minimum. Because it, it was after related to the question of staffing for them. I wanted to make sure who's how many were gonna be there at, at the same time. Um, so that's one. The other question I had and we might have to go back to tape on this one because I, I don't remember this, uh, but under the formal motions, number five, I don't remember us ever voting on number five or adding that as a condition. Eliminate the condition requiring the applicant to provide two bicycles for hotel guest use. Yeah, I believe it was in the motion, but we can go back and confirm if you want. I, I feel like we talked about it, but you're right. I don't know for sure if it was actually in the motion. I don't think it was in the, in the motion. I think we may have discussed it, but I don't believe it was in the motion. Dave, your recollection? I, th I think we made a mistake. I mean, I think we intended to include it in the motion, and probably but we, didn't. I don't think we did. I think he's right. I hope he's wrong. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. I mean, too. I remember the whole discussion. I remember about they, they their attorneys, attorneys, had expressed some concern about liability and you know they the staff recommended that it be taken out um, and no one ever stated any objection but when the actual time uh, to make the motion uh, occurred I think that I forgot So we're in the middle of a public meeting. Um, no, 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 it's fine. Um, what do you, uh, I have a call from Okay. Oh, this is what happened. Through the chair, um, while you were having a discussion, we had a discussion and um, it's recommended by the city attorney that we go back and look at the video to confirm uh -huh. and, and then we can discuss whether, how it might be included as a condition if it was maybe perhaps listed but not part of the actual verbal motion. I think we need to check the tape to see what happened and then figure out how to address it perhaps at the next planning commission meeting. So. Um, in terms of approval of the minutes, we'll just maybe we'll, we'll continue that item till the, the item. If you want to pause on that item, I may have time to review while you're still meeting. <laughs> and then when you have a full commission, you, you can consider the item. Um, <laughs> sure, so we'll, ta we'll table the minutes for a second. Uh, did you have anything else? I um, did, just one, uh, just one thing, but you don't need to check it because I know I said it. Um, <laughs> on page six, when, um, in my many discussion sections, <laughs> um, I was asking the city attorney about um, whether viewing light, whether having discussions about light and views was appropriate for the planning commission. Um, uh, Greg said not appropriate for a criteria of approval. And so one of the things I did say then was that if we wanted to take views into consideration, we would need to draft a view protection ordinance and he said yes. And I guess I just wanna make that clear because that will be coming. So, add so that, I want to, to add record. that to the minutes so that that's noted. So just to clarify under, it's the one, two, three, four, five, six paragraph from the bottom, um, you want that additional language added. Yeah, right, right here. Right. Yes, yeah, we're, we're okay. And it's, and it's still tabled. <laughs> yeah, it's still tabled. Okay, um, so I believe we've covered one, two, three, four, we've tabled five. As far as seven, reports on re recent city council actions. Uh, there are no reports this evening. Uh, planning Commission comments or reports, and you can stretch it out if you like, Angela. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had something to say other than no. it is a pleasure to serve with, with you two. Um, I, I truly feel that way. Hey. Anything from you, sir? No. All right. Um, is there any correspondence? 
None for this evening. Are there any planning staff comments, reports, and updates on current projects? Um, yes, I have a few. Speak slowly. Um, <laughs> so at the last <laughs> planning commission hearing, there was a question from one of the commissioners, I believe it was Commissioner um, Bradley, who had asked staff when the community development department um, is expected to um, beyond the schedule for the Citizens Academy that's happening, that's starting this fall. And so I actually went back and checked the date, so I'll make sure to mention this to Don when he does arrive. But um, just to follow up with the commission, I thought I'd let you all know that um, we're expected to be on the schedule for October 11th and 18th as part of Citizens Academy this year. I'd also like to update um, the commission um, that the Single Family House Advisory Committee met for the fourth time on July 19th um, to kind of dive a little bit deeper into some of the concepts that they're looking at as far as addressing single family house uh, development standards. So um, staff and the consultants will be refining those concepts this month, or actually in August. I guess August officially starts tomorrow. Um, during the month of August and then return with a fifth meeting uh, uh, with the shack sometime in September. So just kind of letting you know um, that we're making progress and that's moving along. Um, as the commission um, may be aware, we are having a, a regular meeting um, on August 24th. First, and that will be a study session on the upcoming cannabis ordinance. And I'd also like to just clarify that that meeting will start at 7 p.m. So we'll make sure that um, we get all of that right um, for that meeting. And then the meeting, uh, first meeting in September, just a reminder that that will occur on a Tuesday, that's September 5th, Tuesday. And uh, so far, we have two items on the agenda. Um, one is uh, grading for remediation at 906 Holly. And then the other is actually um, going to be a zoning ordinance amendment that will be presented to the commission, and that's to address the definition of founders trees, particularly to address the eucalyptus trees on San Carlos Avenue. So that will be um, a recommendation to the city council, so that would move forward. And a lot of the information um, I would like to share is available on the city's website. So there's a historic evaluation for those eucalyptus trees. Um, there's an initial study slash mitigated neg deck that was prepared for that item, as well as um, a report by the arborist. So that is all available on the city's website um, for the public to review. And the um, mitigated neg deck um, was released last last Friday, and it will circulate for 21 days. So if anyone from the community would like to submit written comments, they may do so, and address those to Lisa Costa Sanders, and all of the instructions are available on the website for that item. And I'm sorry, so Lisa, uh, it would be on the website under planning? Correct, so that's under um, City of San Carlos, and then you go to Community Development, you, sec you select Planning, and then from the Planning page, you will there will be a link to that item. And that's all I have for this evening. All right. Ms. Costa Sanders is coming back sometime soon. Uh, yeah, so she'll review that. So in the meantime, if the commission wanted to take a short recess and then come back at seven, uh, we could do that. All right, we'll take a nine minute recess, <laughs> an eight minute recess.
that our eight minute recess is, has been completed. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and reconvene. Um, I'd observe that uh, during the break, we um, got a fourth member. Um, Ms. Bergman still isn't here. So uh, we were going to address the minutes. Um, Ms. Costa Standers, was there a resolution on the minutes? Thank you. Um, I did review the motion and the conversation immediately prior to the motion, and uh, the removal of that condition was not in the motion. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, however. So my recommendation to staff is to go back and revise the minutes to reflect that there was this intent to remove the condition, mm -hmm. and then um, continue this item for a approve all the minutes till next time until we can revise the minutes to reflect that. Could we, I mean, that's fine, but seeing that we've reviewed the minutes already, I mean, is there any reason why we can't just have a motion to approve them with the addition that they should reflect that, uh, that the intention was to include that item, but that it wasn't in the motion? That's fine, um, but do we usually approve minutes without, ha we can later revise the minutes to reflect what that's correct. Okay. Um, there has been um, occasions where um, the minutes have been approved with corrections. So this could be one of the uh, one such correction okay. that we would so, need to make. So, did you have a chance to review the minutes? Yes. Do you have any changes? No. Okay. So um, I know I said I'm going to stop making motions, but I'm going to go ahead and make a motion if that's okay. Um, and the motion is to approve the uh, Planning Commission minutes of July 17th, 2017, uh, with three changes. Um, there was a change um, on page one where Commissioner Gutierrez indicated that. Uh, that on, excuse me, page two, that the word maximum should be minimum. And then I believe uh, Ms. Harper-Peterson, did you have a change as well? I did, yes. yeah, on page six. On, and then the change that was previously indicated on page six. And then finally, um, that the minutes be modified to reflect rather that, uh, that we eliminated the condition requiring the applicant to provide two bicycles for hotel use in the in the in the motion. Um, that instead, that the discussion uh, indicated the commission's intent uh, to eliminate that condition, and it was inadvertently omitted from the motion itself. Um, is there a second? Second. Uh, can I uh, can I have a roll call, please? Uh, Commissioner Bergman is not here. Commissioner Gutierrez? Yes. Commissioner Harper Pedersen? Yes. Vice Chair Bradley? Yes. Chair Silverman? Yes. Uh, motion passes 4 0. Uh, so we have covered uh, the rest of the agenda with the exception of item 6, the public hearing. Um, uh, for the for the folks here in attendance, this is the procedure for the public hearing. Staff is going to pre present a report on the history, physical features, et cetera, on the application, followed with staff's recommendations. The applicant then has the opportunity to make a presentation. Thereafter, interested members of the community may speak on the proposal. When all interested parties have had an opportunity to be heard, the hearing will be closed and no further discussion from the floor will be held. The commission will then consider the evidence and make its recommendation. Uh, if you challenge a public hearing item in court, you may be limited to raising only those issues you or someone else raised at the, hearing, the public hearing described in this notice, the public notice or in written correspondence delivered to the city at or prior to the public hearing. Uh, we ask that speakers fill out a speaker form. They're there and the back in the corner. Um, and hand it to the recording secretary prior to addressing the commission. Uh, that assists us in completing the minutes. Uh, the speaker should come up to the microphone and speak since the meeting is being recorded. This will also assist in preparing the minutes. 
Uh, with that, uh, we're taking up 500 Walnut Street, uh, design review, conditional use, permit and tentative map approval for a new four unit multifamily development. Um, does staff have a presentation? Thank you, yes, good evening. As indicated, the project before you is 500 Walnut, consideration of design review, conditional use permit and tentative map. Oh, I messed up. That was a quick presentation. <laughs> Did you get all that? Yeah. Can you Thank re you. redo it? Yeah. I need it back to the beginning, sorry. Thank you. Uh, the subject site is a 5,250 square foot lot located at the corner of Walnut Street and Holly Street. The site is currently developed with a single family home and the property is owned multifamily, medium density, which allows up to 59 units per acre. When applied at this site, that would allow up to seven residential units. As indicated, the request before you is design review for the new uh, three-story townhouse building a conditional use permit to allow parking within 40 feet of a street, and tentative map for the condominium units. Uh, there's three large trees on the site. The large heritage tree, uh, excuse me, large cedar tree in the front yard will be retained. And then there's an oak and an acacia tree in the rear yard by the detached garage. So um, the acacia tree on that, um, photo is the one a little bit to the left and the oak tree is actually splits and is quite large uh, farther back to the rear of the site. Uh, the acacia tree will be removed and the oak tree will be retained. The applicant has um, submitted an arborist report that confirms that both of these trees can be retained with the new construction. It's the design of the new three-story building as viewed from Holly Street. Um, the development includes ground floor parking within a fully enclosed garage, four units designed in a stacked townhouse style. The second floor includes a living room, kitchen, dining area, half bath, and a front balcony. The third floor each includes two bedrooms and two bathrooms with a small balcony at the side yard. The building is designed with contemporary architecture with clean lines as well as some traditional elements with the shingles and the gable ends and brackets at the upper level. Windows at the ground floor and the large second story windows kind of help break up the building and create a very open feeling. And this is the uh, view at the side when viewed from Walnut Street. The proposed development includes stone at the base. Oh. There's the, sorry, passing around the color and material paper. Uh, includes stone at the base, smooth cement plaster for the second floor and cedar, sh cedar shingles on the third floor. Um, and I'll defer to the project ac architect if you have more questions on the design details. And then the conditional use permit, you've seen this several times before, it's for the um, above ground or at grade parking located within 40 feet of a street. Due to the size of the property, it's 40 feet wide with a total area of 5,250 square feet, it would really be prohibitive to have any parking um, set back of 40 feet. And the um, architect also looked through various options for stacked parking as well as below grade parking. And due to the size of the lot, it just became infeasible. The parking will be well screened within the um, garage with a solid door as well as um, surrounded by the walls for the first floor. The parking does comply with our parking requirements as staff is supportive of the conditional use permit. And then finally, the tentative map is required for the subdivision, thus to create a total of four condominium units with common open space. The applicant hosted an outreach meeting on February 8th, and um, I can let him explain that if you have any questions. The city mailed public notice on July 20th and posted that in the newspaper on July 21st. First, excuse me. Staff received one comment, and that was just on the trees. Um, my response was that those two trees would be retained, and the commenter was satisfied with that response. And this is the motion, should you choose to make it. I'd be happy to try to answer any questions. The applicant, architect, and I believe um, their engineer are also here this evening. Does anyone have any questions for staff at this time? Um, I do, actually. Lisa, can you? 
help me understand, um, when I was going through the applicable minimum design standards, I guess um, I'm curious, I guess, how, why, or under what circumstances substandard lot sizes are allowed? Because there seems this is a much smaller lot than the requirement indicates. So for any um, new subdivision, it would need to meet the minimum lot size requirements, but since this is a legal lot, it is developable. Okay, so it's grandfathered in essentially. Right. Got it, okay, thank you. And then, um, let's see. A uh, question about the parking standards. So the 20% reduction is automatic because of where it's located, and it doesn't require a TOD plan or any sort of incentives on, on the part of the developer? Correct, it does not require a TDM plan. Um, it's just given its proximity to transit, it's actually something we really encourage them to look at. Previously, they were required, uh, providing more parking, and we really wanted to have that reduction to encourage the alternate uses of public transportation. But we couldn't require a request that they give out passes or anything of that sort, I guess. Since no, because seven. it does meet all the code requirements, correct. Got it, okay, thank you. Um, and then one other, one final question for you, Lisa. So this is the second consecutive request to adjust the parking distance from the street. And I'm, I guess I'm curious if, if our requirement is too restrictive and if maybe we should agendize a change to the zoning ordinance. Yeah, I think we talked about that a little bit, staff, to try to look into maybe more about what the intent is. Because a lot of the ones that you're seeing, they're within a fully enclosed parking garage. And I think the intent is to hide the parking, which all of these projects have done. So that is something, yes, we're looking at it a staff level and I believe may bring forward. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Lisa. Those uh, are all my staff questions. Anyone else have any questions for staff? At this time, okay. No. Um, does the applicant have a presentation they want to make? Uh, good evening, Fred Strath, the architect. Uh, we went through a series of uh, options as far as garage and driveway and so on. You know, this seemed to be kind of the most practical. Um, Lisa has given kind of a good presentation as far as the overview of the project and I'd be very happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, does anyone have any questions for the applicant or the architect? And I'm sorry, who do you, ha who do you have with you? Uh, the civil engineer and the owner. Okay. I, I do. Can you just walk me through the setback on the third floor real quick? And I think it's maybe my eye looking at the renderings, but it doesn't, it doesn't really look 10 feet back. So do you have, can you kind of walk me through where that 10 foot setback is on the third floor? Okay, that applies to the rear of the building? Or what is actually side view opposite this? So he needs the walnut uh, view, I think. So you have walnut and then you have the side property line, um, which is the opposite side from what you see on the screen. On that particular side, there's a five foot setback on the first two levels and then a 10 on the on the third. Can, could you guys put that, put that up so I can, so the, I can the view see from it. the Walnut Street, please. I'm just trying to get a sense of the setback because it seems not to meet it, but I'm, I'm sure it does. I'm just not seeing it. Visually, it just looks right. like it looks flat. Thank you. That's exactly what I'm, <laughs> what I'm getting at. Uh, we have kind of a street frontage and we have a, a rear setback or along the side there. So uh, where you see that uh, sloped roof, uh, that cuts in the five feet to go from a five foot to a 10 foot setback. And am I looking, am I looking on Holly Street right oh. now? On Walnut. on Walnut right now for what's on. Okay. And so you're telling me from wherever I am over here to that third floor is 10 feet? Yes, on the left-hand side from what you see here. So I think what they're saying is there is no setback from Walnut. This, the setback is from, um, is from Holly. Yeah. So if 
if you believe there should be or needs to be a setback from Walnut, there isn't one. Is that is that consistent with our development standards to not have the setback from Walnut? I know I, I, I hear staff busily uh, conferring on that issue. Okay. I, I'm happy to hold on until we staff start. Comes we back. start with a 10 foot setback um, on Walnut Street. I'm sorry, on Holly Street. Yeah, so the requirement that we're implementing is that the on the interior side, which is the side you know, facing the neighbor's yard there, opposite Holly Street, um, that's the one where you need the additional f setback, 10 feet from the property line. So according, to the, according to the report, the setback on the Walnut side is 15 feet. Um, and it looks like the, the setback from Holly is 10 feet um, on the ground level and then increases to um, 15 feet as it goes up, I think. Yeah, I, I'm just not super clear on that. Actually, on Walnut Street, it maintains the 10 foot. We're going to grab the code to verify um, that interpretation, but I believe it was only required on the interior side and not the street sides. So if you wanted to ask other questions, we can come back to that one. That'd be great. Thank that you. That was my understanding. Um, great. Um, can you quickly walk me through the common open space? When I was looking at the open space um, requirement and what was considered common open space, it seemed like it was a lot of stairs. Can you walk me through what else is considered common open space in the design? Okay. Um, if you take, if you're on Holly Street, the right hand side, uh, if you uh, take that area and a little bit of the other front setback area, then you'll get the required setback for common space. The units themselves have additional private Commons or private space. Private or open space. Okay. Um, I think it's better viewed on the landscape plan sheet L1. So, um, what's kind of traditionally the rear yard, if Walnut is the front, that entire area is common open space. So, it's landscaped, it's got some um, pavers in there, and it's got some, I believe, crushed granite in there. And then there's a little walking path that could take you around the backside. Um, so it's really that traditional rear yard that has a lot of landscaping in it and functions well. Do we have an elevation for the interior side of the building? We do in the plans. I didn't include it in the presentation. Where, uh, which, which, where on the plans is it? Which uh, sheet? Mm -hmm. That's where they're supposed to be a five foot uh, increase of five foot setback, according to the. On sheet five is that interior elevation, but it's since it's just a flat elevation, it'd be hard to see how it steps back. You can see it on um, sheet six, where you see the side, the, the, uh, the front and the rear elevations, you see how it steps back on the upper level. So where, which is the interior, is that the right elevation or the left elevation? The interior is on sheet five as the southeast elevation. So, I mean, just according, I'm sorry, I don't mean to get too minutiae, but when you look at the, um, when you look at the report on page three, it says that on the interior side, it should it has to have a five foot setback 
on the first and second floors and then a 10 foot setback on the third floor? Correct. So is the whole thing 10 feet or is there an additional five feet? The, the third floor is set back um, with the entire third floor is on that interior side. Because that's where the, uh, that's where these. Um, and then the balconies come out balconies from there. Are. Correct. Okay. And so the balconies, got it. All right. The balconies were primarily put in there to kind of break up to that provide, roof. And to provide the necessary setback, presumably. Okay. Is that, is that kind of where you were going? I think the renderings are just having me. Yeah, they look very flat. They look flat. And there doesn't, I mean, looking at them, there doesn't seem to be a lot of breakup of bulk and massing. Right. Which I assume where you were going. Exactly. Yeah, it seems to be my thing these days. Um, I wasn't going to say that, nor was I going to do any. All right, I'll or. say it for you. Um, and particularly because also LU810 says that all facades should should have quality elements and I mean essentially what it says is it should look nice from all facades and I understand that not all facades necessarily need to have the full articulation that the front facade does but mm -hmm. I'm just I'll bet like you I said I feel like it's a rendering problem probably yeah I'll bet you those balconies are pretty nice yeah, yeah, and all four of those well, units no, have I, gable projections. I would agree with that. If you look at the um, at the very back of the staff packet, there's um, the graphics that the applicants provided, and the second to last one shows that elevation. So you see yeah, the nice. roof line, and then you see the balconies are very open, yeah. and so that's where that additional step back is. Uh, okay, I see what you mean. And the stone base does wrap around that lower elevation as well. I will say I, I really do like the gables. I love the, the open glass on that floor. I think it really helps break it up. Um, and obviously the balconies are, look lovely. And I love that there's a minimal use of stucco. Yeah. Um, so the breaking up of the materials, and I think the colors you chose, I'm, I'm imagining it's going to look really nice. So I, I will say, overall, I like the design. I'm just trying to make sure it's consistent sure. with what we, with and what unfortunately, our are. I have a 3D movie version of it, but we couldn't uh, mm. sync up, so yeah, I can't show <laughs> I would have loved that. That way I could have walked you right on around the building. Right. But. Okay. Um, anything else for... Your architect's not here? I am. Oh, you're the architect. Okay. Then congratulations for squeezing every single square foot you could according to the, the zoning and the requirements of the city to come up with a workable project like this. Also, I congratulate you on getting the parking worked out to this so it looks like it it would work. Um, I did notice uh, the landscape plan doesn't show the existing oak, or I couldn't see it on here, and I, I think we should show that, that it's saved. And I, congratulations I, I, on saving the big tree out front, um, but it's going to be awfully close. Yes. Yeah, I, I did have a revised. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I received the revision after the packet was um, prepared, but we do have the revised plan, and we'll, we can note it in the record as well. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, because we thought it was important to save those, save those trees. I'm happy about that. Anything else for the architect? We're able to um, follow up on your question on this upper story setback. We did pull the code and confirm that it's only required on that interior side to have the additional five feet. And what you may be thinking of is you've received probably more four story buildings than you've seen three story buildings and that's where that upper story setback really comes in. Thank you and, and thank you for helping walk me through sure. all the, all the um, sides and elevations. Thank you, those were all my questions and comments. I think it's a very nice looking building. So on this drawing, it makes it look like there's there are openings on the interior side uh, to the garage. Is that is that real? Uh, we were trying to open the garage so it wasn't just a closed-in space, but um, 
that was either going to be some kind of lattice work or uh, some kind of wall treatment because it would probably be desirable not to have a garage open to. Yeah, I, I don't think that that would look very good, especially for the neighbors, because um, right now there's a relatively small uh, structure next to it. So, I mean, so what were you thinking, lattice work? Yeah, Could we do some sort of like living wall or something like that? You know, maybe some, like a plant wall or something? Could you do that? Absolutely. In fact, we have another project we're looking at that option, so yes. Are you okay with that? Okay. Um, if you can come, I'm sorry, I don't mean to, to be overly formal because I'm not, but it will only record if you're actually at the podium. In this state of turmoil this country's in right now, I've just, uh, <clears throat> I appreciate your comments about trying to design what we can maximum on this building. Um, I've been a licensed contractor 45 years, folks. I built two houses down 10 years ago on Holly, 1263. What has happened today with zoning requirements and intensity, uh, listening to these questions, Fred and Lisa have worked very well together. Um, I purchased the property 14 months ago with a rendering showing four townhomes on it with two car garages. I walked it into the planning department, City of San Carlos, before closing escrow. Yes, it is doable. Seven months later, after changing ingress, egress from Holly to Walnut, to two car garages, to single car because of transit district, talking about things that are um, very difficult to describe. And uh, finally, after my gibberish, I'm sorry for going on, but I needed to vent. This had to come out. But to answer your question, well, it's been a long process. I have a bank that believes in me, but they're starting to lose faith if I don't get this project going. So to answer your question on the open space in the back where the drive-through is, Fred, thank God, designed that garage with the six parking spots. But in order to back up that final last spot, we left that little opening so you could rear. You must realize there will be a six foot fence there, all kinds of landscaping, plus there is a two story building there. The people are not going to see that opening because there's a six foot fence there. So um, I think things have been addressed well. And again, we please, my intent is not to make dollars here. It's try to get this project finished and try to provide housing, believe that or not. But I just, i it's been a very interesting experience. And uh, I, I wish people would go through some of this on the other side and then realize, because I will speak at a forum for seniors on what it takes to put a project together, what the costs are, what the time frames, and then if your council is favorable or not. So anyway, thank you for your time. It would, now I'm confused. So are you saying, I'm looking at this rendering right here, and there are these two big, they look like almost, okay, so what were you talking about? The rear, where you said the, the apartment behind. No, I wasn't talking Sorry. about, I wasn't talking about the rear. I was talking about right here on this rendering. Oh, well, the, the front garage doors are all covered and with planning tricks. That's the opposite. That's opposite. It's not the front. Oh, okay, then I guess Fred can address that better than I can. I just was going off on it. This is, as far as I understand, this is the interior. Uh, this is the, so this is the side that is opposite uh, to um, Walnut, I believe. Um, this is the interior where there's basically a, what I'm guessing is a triplex right next door. Uh, I think it, I think it's four units. Okay, well it's three garages, they have three garages. Right. So this, as I understand it, this elevation is the one that is immediately adjacent to that, uh, to that property. Correct. And it's got two basically garage door sized openings. And I thought that that was not terribly attractive, but if you're telling me it's absolutely necessary from a function standpoint, then I'm open to hearing that. But it sounded like your architect was okay partially enclosing it. I, that was between Lisa and Fred. I don't think so. 
Okay, I'm sorry. I'll <laughs> sit down. <laughs> but it, vent heard. Okay. Okay. Uh, originally, there was a wide opening so that they could back out and then pull out to the street just to make maneuvering simpler. I see. Um, when the building was kind of divided up into like two duplexes for various reasons, um, columns were put in there, which now would make it rather difficult to be able to back into that space. So having that open isn't as important as it was originally. So uh, yes, I'd say we'd be willing to go with lattice or or living wall or whatever else, um, because again, it isn't as necessary as it was at one time. Okay, thank you, sir, I appreciate it. Okay, um, sorry. One more. Yes, sir. I, I'm not so sure that those t two cars against that wall will be able to back out with those posts there. Um, it'll take a little extra maneuver because they are against the wall. Um, those openings give just a little bit of maneuvering space. Um, the other option would be to have the landscaping on the fence side to screen it rather than against the wall of the garage to give that little extra buffer. I'll just ask for some screening, maximum screening to the extent feasible, how's that? Um, so uh, we have one public comment, it's uh, Paul Siegel for um, 512 Walnut. Um, did you want to come up, sir? I think there's one. Oh, oh that's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, thanks for uh, giving us the time to speak. Um, my wife and I are nine year residents at uh, 512 Walnut, and um, uh, my wife has uh, respiratory problems, so we're concerned about the uh, dust that w uh, during construction and uh, the noise. And um, so we uh, we were here when uh, there was the hearing on uh, 530 Walnut and 545 Walnut. So we really appreciated the fact that the commission would put in requirements for uh, dust mitigation measures and noise abatement and. Uh, limiting the hours to um, Monday through Friday, eight to five. So we'd like to ask for a similar um, uh, requirements for this construction. So I'm assuming that we did that as part of the grading and dirt haul, and I don't think there's any grading dirt hauling on this project, is there? Um, there's not a grading and dirt hall certificate required because it's well under the 1,000 cubic yard threshold. Okay. Um, so you have a design review, tentative map, and then the use permit for the parking. Mm -hmm. So then um, when it comes to dust mitigation, noise abatement during regular construction, we don't have a mechanism to alter construction hours? So I think the construction hours are set by the code. Right. Have we modified those? I think we've modified like the, 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 the dirt, dirt hall, hall, right? Dirt hall, we've, yeah. But I think, I want to say we have, I mean, that was my question no, last time on yeah. 26 L3, and I'm pretty sure we have limited I feel like we have. have. I'm not sure we can, and again, I don't know that this meets the threshold. I'm just no, no. curious. I mean, like, hey, if I can, if I can condition it, I'm happy to condition it. Right. We were looking back at the documents for 530 and 545, and we did see that uh, hours were limited on those projects. Um, was it construction hours or was it um, dirt hall hours? Uh, well, it, it was. I know it was 530, which did not have the um, the uh, the underground garage component. I, I want to say it was construction hours. Yeah, I do remember uh, your testimony at that time. Could I be wrong? Yeah, but I think I think Jesse's right. Sorry. And what, were, what, were, what did you understand the the construction hours to be limited to? Uh, I believe I believe it was eight to five. I could be wrong about eight that. to five Monday through Monday through Friday. Yeah. Is there any way we can? Check? Well, I mean, uh, you know, we could avoid even having to worry about it if the applicant is willing to limit the construction eight to five. Jurisdiction. 
and are you okay with an eight to five yes. limitation of construction? All right, well, the applicant's fine with it, so then we don't have to worry about whether we have the power. So um, is that, if you can go ahead and come to the microphone. Thank you. I'm the one who has the breathing problems. Yeah. It's really, I mean, we understand, I, it's, it looks like you're putting up a beautiful building and we have no problems with that. We, we just really ask that there be mitigation to the dust through the whole construction project. Our apartment is, it's, it's one building back, there's a small building, and then we're up on the top floor of the building behind it, right over the project. So it really, really is important to us that the dust be kept down during the whole construction. So I don't know if you heard the applicant, I mean, he indicated that basically he was gonna take it down by hand and do right. minimal grading. So. What I think the I'm whole construction we're talking about, not just the knocking down the building. The construction is going to go on for a long time, and there's going to be dust, and and it's it goes up in the air, and we're right over it. Yeah. So I think that what we can do is we can ask staff to work with the building department uh, to ensure that you know as building permits are issued, the issue of dust is addressed. Oh, thank you so much. And through the chair, um, condition number 13 uh, references uh, best management practices. And typically these best management practices also include uh, measures for dust mitigation. So we can, um, if, if the commission you know, wants to specifically cite dust mitigation, we can add that to condition 13. But otherwise the BMP's best management practices address these types of concerns for all projects. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Magnani, did I? Did I well, no, that's, there are two options. I, I knew, uh, I, I worked with an attorney named Tom Magnani who spelled it exactly like that. So I'm sure you're saying your name right and he's saying his I, name I would wrong. I so, after yeah. so many years. <laughs> uh, thank you, first I wanna say, I, I am presently uh, delighted by this beautiful building. Thank you guys for building it. The, uh, I've been a resident of Walnut Street for eight years. I'm actually, I live in that little building that everyone keeps referring to uh, next to it, 510 Walnut Street. So this is, this is gonna be uh, my neighbor. So I've been living on Walnut for eight years and uh, I'm sure as the Seagulls know, eight years ago it was a fairly quiet street. Uh, and as of late, it's been turned into a hotbed of construction, noise and air pollution. I, I do welcome the facelift that this street needed. It was full of kind of older, apartments that were kind of going down, and I think it's actually really important for the, uh, for the beauty of the neighborhood. But my biggest concerns really are surrounding the fact that there's three current uh, act major construction sites within two blocks, uh, and then two more slated to start at 5.30 and 5.45. Um, and like the Seagulls, uh, I actually am a family man. I have some young ones at home. And my concerns really surround them. We live in an old building with single pane windows. It's incredibly drafty. And my landlord, we've asked her several times, understanding that these gentlemen need to build their, build their building. And she says, well, she doesn't have to do anything. So there's nothing she has to do to put in double pane windows, uh, put in better insulation. So on hot summer nights like this, our windows are all, all open, meaning that we get the dust, we get the VOCs, we get anything that's coming off the construction site. So I think my, my main, main concerns really are surrounding how we can ma maintain this sleepy community and help it get through this tumultuous time of transition. Any, any specific suggestions with respect to this project? Yeah, you know, I've, I've thought about it and uh, I actually asked my father who's in the construction industry and I first thought about asking to put a moratorium on building um, until 5.30 and 5.45 are done. And I understand this gentleman took out a major loan. I wouldn't wanna, you know, make him financially insolvent after, um, after he took this great risk. Uh, I'm actually turning to the council for that seeing what we can do to, to help this neighborhood get through it because it really has turned into, and I recommend everyone come down at 7.30 in the morning and watch the cars line up or even seven o'clock in the morning as the diesel trucks spew through our neighborhood. Uh, it's, it's pretty rough and it went from a quiet neighborhood to uh, just a hotbed of activity. Anything else we can do other than, I mean, I'm hearing you. Yeah, no, and I know and I appreciate the open forum um, specifically 
talking to my landlord and asking her to put in double pane <laughs> windows and making sure that old drafty apartment can actually be sealed off. I work from home on some days and so does my wife and we have our kid at home as well. And I understand those are construction hours and they have to work from eight to five. Uh, but as we all know that there is uh, certain externalities that come from construction, whether it's air pollution, whether it's noise pollution, and those are all hazardous to certain people's health. I would like to be in my home with the windows closed and not and not know and know that there's no uh, pollution blowing into my house. And if you've been to 510 Walnut, it literally is an arm's length. I can reach over uh, between our property lines where my door is and that is, and with my, you know, long skinny arm, I can I can touch the fence. I guess I would I would ask city staff: Is there is there anything we or the city staff can do to help um, this gentleman mitigate this challenging time? Um, beyond limiting construction hours, you know, construction hours and days of the week, as well as um, the best management practices that are employed during uh, the construction activity, um, we don't really see any other options, but those are the typically, you know, the tools that we have in our toolbox to address these types of concerns. Okay. I mean, it might be a better discussion for council or anybody else, but it does seem like this neighborhood is hit particularly hard with, with kind of a rush of construction at the same time. Um, if there's something that can be done, it would be nice. I, I, I am certain you're right and there's nothing particular that we can do, but um, we feel you. Um, well, and I think we that's know that's difficult. I think very we, challenging. We're, we're all pro-growth. Uh, watching San Carlos go from a sleepy city to a, a booming young town is great. It's great for my family. Uh, but I think when we are approving all of these construction uh, permits, people forget that people live there. And we live our lives there and we have a right to live there in peace. Right. Uh, and it's inalienable. And right now, I don't know how the seagulls feel, but it's loud uh, and it's through all hours and it's, it's become uh, pretty bothersome. Yeah. Are there any other projects uh, north of uh, San Carlos Avenue that we haven't seen yet that are on their way? No, we don't believe so. Nothing that that pops to mind. I don't believe there's any additional um, in the queue. Um, That's something. Through through the chair, <laughs> I just Stop also me smile. <laughs> I just also wanted to mention um, that for other projects, I know there have been um, requirements or conditions placed on those projects to send out courtesy notices during the course of construction. So at least um, neighbors you know, can be informed when certain types of construction activity would take place. Would, um, I so I know that's been that. something else that we've done in the past. So I did, I did find 530 Walnut, we did condition for cons uh, limited construction hours as well as the, the noticing too. So I'll probably make a recommendation on that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, appreciate Thank you. it. Um, there are other folks here who haven't had an opportunity to speak. Was there anyone else who wanted to provide public comment who hasn't had an opportunity to do so? All right. I would just say uh, we appreciate the residents' concerns about dust and noise in the construction phase, but keep in mind that it is temporary. They, the job will get done. And I imagine it just doesn't feel temporary after a while. Uh -huh. um, as someone who's lived across the street from a construction zone now for a year with probably another year to go, um, I understand. Um, so with that, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Um, I'm going to acknowledge uh, Ms. Harper Pedersen um, for the second. Um, can I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Gutierrez? Yes. Commissioner Harper Pedersen? Yes. Vice Chair Bradley? Yes. Chair Silverman? Yes. Um, Commissioner, comments, questions, thoughts, deliberations? Um, I think I expressed most of my thoughts during, um, during the question section, um, only to say that I, I really, once again, I really do like the design and, and I'm glad that it's a what looks like is gonna be a very nice building going up. And anything we can do, Jesse, if you're gonna add the recommendation um, as far as construction hours and dust mitigation would be, would be great. 
And that's all I have. Anything from you, sir? Um, I am delighted, as I said, that you've saved the oak tree on the back of the property and the large tree at the corner. Um, I would like to see, if possible, maybe a variance that the building be moved uh, about five feet to the west because otherwise the, the large tree on the corner is going to be within a foot of um, the wall of, the, of your building there. I, I measured it off. You want to respond to that? Because I don't think we could actually do a variance today, um, I, I assume. So uh, I don't know. Do you, is that right? Is the tree only going to be a foot from the, the building? Do you want to come on up? And Don, are you mostly concerned about the health of the tree or? or? Yeah, I'm yeah. delighted that they're okay. not going to remove the tree, but I, uh, you'll end up with having to cut half of the tree off up to 30 feet. I see what you mean. Okay. Um, just two days ago, I met with Leslie, uh, Leslie, uh, with Richard Maine, your city arborist. Um, we measured it off, and we are four feet away from the root system. Mm -hmm. And system. his recommendation was to have him out there if we experience a couple large uh, below-grade roots, more than six inches. And I told Lisa, I am more than willing, we will do whatever we can to protect that tree. And the whole issue originally of this project was to save that tree for the neighbors. And it's a huge, you know, it has two main trunks going up. We're going to keep both of those trunks, but we're gonna trim in a rotation around. And uh, Mr. Maine, Richard, said he did not see any problem. Uh, it, not trying to correct you, but the way we taped it off from the line, and again, we have to have a final survey in the corners and the points, but we are showing four feet away from that tree, not a foot. I measured with my own feet and uh, <laughs> to the sidewalk, to the sidewalk. He had, he had deceptively sidewalk. Large, feet. large feet. He has deceptively uh, large feet. Seven shoes. <laughs> the sidewalk may not be the property line. There's an inside, there's two different lines there. It's very, there's the median, the sidewalk, yeah. and then there's a foot, there's almost 14 inches before the property line. So there's a city right of way there. That's what you're confusing. Okay. Also, I, also, if you, if you walked it also, did you notice that there's a high voltage PG&E vault? I there's did. two of them there. Yeah. So this precludes another problem with the property. Originally, planning wanted us to come in Walnut Street. It doesn't work over those high voltage mains. There's many innate things that are hassles with this project. If, as you say, there's four feet between the, the tree trunk and your, your roof line or your building, I am elated, sir. Okay, the other thing too, please, again, not, um, we have designed the, the pad for this building instead of using piers, when I built down the street, four down, we used piers that were 15 foot on center throughout the building. We've gone to an 18 inch grid with double sets of rebar for the existing pad. So that negates the depth near that tree also. That's another migrating was to try to keep the foundation shallow, not to affect the tree. So a lot of thoughts gone into that tree, sincerely. Any other? Planning Commission comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, deliberations, salutations, <laughs> elucidations. Um, do you want to make a motion? So, yeah. You wanted to, uh, what was? You know, I just, w I would like to see the openings on the, um, I think it's the north. Is it the north elevator? What are we calling it? I mean, we know what you mean, but right. Oh, I, I want to get this accurate. Yeah. Um, per the plan sheet five, it's referenced as the southeast elevation. Yeah, the southeast elevation. Okay. 
So screening the openings of the so southeast elevation yeah. to the screening extent the, feasible. Exactly, S screening the uh, southeast elevation. Southeast el the, the openings on the south, the ground floor of the southeast elevation, with um, to the extent feasible. You know, with landscaping to the extent feasible. All right, I'm I'm not the expert like you are, so you may have to help me with this one. But uh, you're going to do fine. Uh, I move that the Planning Commission grant approval of the request for design review conditional use permit and tentative map for a four unit townhouse building at 500 Walnut Street, APN 050-064-040 based on the findings and for the reasons incorporated in the staff report as conditioned in the code compliance certificate, conditional use permit and tentative map with condition 22, uh, construction activity shall be Limit it to 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday only. Condition number 23, that the applicant uh, contractor send uh, a courtesy notice to neighbors within a 300 foot radius prior to the start of uh, construction and uh, have a contact number for them to uh, contact uh, th the person in charge. And condition 24, I can't read my own notes. So uh, to allow screening in the southeast elevation opening uh, with landscaping to the extent feasible, is that fine? Yeah, require, but yes. Okay, require. And then did you wanna make a modification to 13 to make clear that uh, best management practices include um, Dust uh, mitigation. Dust, dust, dust uh, and particulate mitigation. Sure, I'll take that amendment, <laughs> or that addition, I should say. Uh, was there anything else before a second? I think that's everything, I'll second that. Okay, there's a second. Um, can I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Gutierrez. Yes. Commissioner harper Peterson. Yes. Vice Chair Bradley. Yay. And Chair Silverman. Uh, yes, good luck. Did you, I was going to say, did you? <laughs> We're still rolling, Dave. Hey, ask the attorney. Uh, I don't if, believe the gavel as, was. As soon as two people leave, the meeting is automatically adjourned. Thank you. As a matter of law. Yes, I adjourned. I don't bang you. I don't bang the gavel. <laughs>